Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is a significant day for many as we remember those who have given their lives for peace. During our service there will be an opportunity to observe two minutes silence as we remember them. We'll share in prayers and poems which aid our focus and we'll have opportunity to reflect on our own peace as an act of remembrance. May God bless you as you engage in worshipping him this morning. Pure peace comes from above. It is a manifestation of selfless love. If you find you can forgive, you'll find that you can live in pure peace. Pure peace comes from deep inside when you get rid of foolish pride. Only when you can forgive will you find that you can live in pure peace. There are no excuses. There can be no blame. Just a realization that we're all loved the same. That like Jesus, we must forgive. And then we can live in pure peace. Pure peace cannot reign where judgment presides, where labels and hatred a world divides. We need to learn to forgive. Only then can we live in pure peace. Pure peace in a world that is dark and broken, where we have not learnt from the men that have fallen. Only when we start to forgive can we truly live in pure peace. That peace may be seen in the world today. Let it be so, dear Lord, I pray, that the gift of pure peace can be seen in each heart, so that slowly, day by day, the world will start to live in pure peace.
Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give us peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of their grief and the sadness of their loss. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all those who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and the hatred of humanity, may God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. For all those who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen.
they shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, or the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. And some there be who no memorial have, who perished as though they'd never been. For our tomorrows, there today they gave, and simply asked that in our hearts they'd live. We heed their call and pledge ourselves again. At dusk and dawn, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow, we gave our today.
For many, Remembrance Day is about reflection. It's about both looking back, but also looking forward as we pause just briefly to remember those who have paid the ultimate price for our peace. It's a day to be respectful, especially to those who have lost loved ones. It's a very personal day, but it's also a day for the bringing together of a collective consciousness, a united focus when we as a nation and as people around the world can be as one, if just for a moment. Remembrance Day is offered an opportunity to reflect on the horrors of war and a resolution to never again resort to such bloody conflict. But this year somehow seems more poignant. Many will be unable to pay their respects in quite the same way as they usually do, as parades are cancelled or curtailed, as we continue to live with and fight a silent and unseen enemy which takes lives just as indiscriminately as any battlefield. And as we pause to remember the loss today, we'll also have cause to reflect on those whose lives have been taken by this deadly virus, and especially those who've given their lives trying to fight it. Just as war changes lives irrevocably, so we will have a different perspective on life and what is important when we finally emerge from this crisis. For many, this time of uncertainty and isolation has caused much anxiety and fear as people have tried to adjust to a new way of life with restricted freedom and inhibited movement. However, I hope that as Christians, our perspective has been and remains one of hope and of an inner peace born from the knowledge that Christ has already overcome the world. That is certainly what is on offer to us. As followers of Christ, we are convinced that no matter what the conflict or the issue in front of us, we have already won the victory through Christ, who has conquered sin and death on the cross. And that in that knowledge, we have peace. John 16.33 says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In the world you have trouble and suffering, but take courage. I have conquered the world. How courageous are you feeling this morning? In this verse from John's Gospel, Jesus is addressing his disciples and preparing them for his departure. He was reminding them that they would face trials and tribulation trouble and suffering but take courage take courage because i have conquered the world i have conquered the world not i will when i'm resurrected but i have conquered jesus knew who he was he knew the power available to him through the father he knew the path that he had to take and in his mind and in his heart the victory was already won there can be no doubting that as Christians we are not immune to difficult circumstances, but we are to take courage, be resolute, for Christ has already overcome and offers us victory in him. Paul writes words of encouragement in his letter to the church at Colossae. He's seeking to encourage them to live differently now that they live in Christ and he wants to press home to them that in so doing they will develop an ever-increasing sense of peace. In Colossians 3, 15 and 16 it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. You see, it's only by living closer to Christ, by immersing ourselves in his love, in living like him, that we will be able to experience the peace 
that he intends for us. So how do we ensure that our focus is Christ and only Christ amidst all the turmoil that is life in general, but especially in these ever-changing times? In writing to the Philippians, Paul puts it this way, Philippians 4, 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always in everything and let your gentleness be evident to all. Paul seems to be saying that the peace of God is not a passive byproduct of inactivity, but the positive outcome of proactivity. The onus is on us to ensure that our hearts and our minds are on Jesus, that in so doing we will have cause to rejoice in every and all circumstances, and that by so doing the peace of God, which transcends our understanding, will keep guard over our hearts and thoughts, what we feel and what we think. Therefore, peace becomes a choice as well as a blessing. And as a choice, it's an act of remembrance. The remembrance of whose we are, of the battle already fought and won. The devil may try to convince us to despair, to fear, to doubt. But when our focus is Jesus, when our hearts are filled with rejoicing and with praise for who he is and for what he has done, for the victory that he has won on our behalf, then his peace will come. That calm assurance that we belong to him, that nothing can separate us from his love. And then that peace becomes an act of remembrance. Are you at peace this morning? Is your focus on Jesus or are there things which are distracting you? Preoccupations, perhaps, which are keeping you away from knowing the truth. Whose voice are you listening to? Can you hear Jesus assuring you that nothing can separate you from his love, that no matter how far you may feel from him, he will never leave you? Are you listening to the devil tell you that you are not worthy, that you don't deserve to be loved unconditionally? Are you able to rejoice in the Lord always, no matter what your current circumstances? If you are, then you can know the peace of God, which is beyond anything that we could humanly explain or rationalise. A peace that only he can give. In John 14, 27, Jesus promises us, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. On this Remembrance Sunday, it's my prayer that we might each know his peace. A peace which comes from a life in him. A peace which flows out of our praise for him. A peace which becomes an act of remembrance of his victory over death and of our eternal life. May you know that peace today and every day as you strive to follow him. Let's pray. Father, on this day of remembrance, we are mindful of those who gave their lives for peace. We're grateful to them and to you for making that possible. Father, we are especially grateful for the sacrifice of your son, given freely as an act of love to bring us back into relationship with you. We thank you for the eternal life which is ours because of that act. 
Father, we pray that in accepting that love and your forgiveness, we might know your peace in our hearts and in our minds today. That as we worship you, as we lift our hearts in praise to you today, we might receive that peace afresh, knowing that we are ransomed, healed, restored and forgiven in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.